How do you find issues about, say, the legal base? One of the things that is a great advantage to many, say, of the Anglosphere countries is not just that they speak English, but the fact that they've got this British English common law background is uniting them. South American law based on Spanish law can be a little bit labyrinthine to those who are used to that way of working. Do you think that's a big issue for the development of these exchanges in the international community going forward? The interesting thing is that it's not required great changes in any laws to Mm -hmm. bring about the integration. It's much more been a focus of regulation. In all three countries, to a large extent, the regulation is left to the regulators. The market structure has not been dictated by law, which is the opposite of, let's say, Hong Kong or Australia, where the law is very specific. In Australia, you have the Corporations Act, which covers all things to do with capital markets. Whilst that law is very old and no longer really fit for purpose, nobody really wants to take the cudgel to it and try and change it. Same way in Hong Kong, again, the law dictates that the exchange has a monopoly. Under Anglo legal structures, generally speaking, the law law is very prescriptive about the capital market, whereas in South America, it's less the law and more the regulation. For example, in Brazil, we saw CVM, the regulator, about one year ago, introduce new regulations that dramatically opened up the potential for competition in Brazil by making it easier for someone to apply for a license. There are now eight or nine groups looking to potentially compete with B3 in some way, shape or form in Brazil. That's quite incredible, particularly given the fact that B3 has spent the last decade since the first possible winds of competition were blowing through the Brazilian capital markets, essentially making sure that B3 happened. I mean, bringing together BMNF, Bethesda, adding in Bond CSD, etc., etc., to create an incredible leviathan, which even trades, what, car loans, if I remember correctly, amongst all sorts of other weird and wonderful securities. Brazil is a kind of hot topic because it's one of those things, that it's the first letter of RICS, I suppose, which used to be quite a thing. It's very interesting to the outside world. A lot of people get very excited about it. And yet they've had this sort of 10 years ago or so, the first competitors were trying to get into the market like ATG, which all find it very, very difficult. Do you feel that there really therefore has been a fundamental change of attitude and these eight or nine groups are going to find themselves predominantly getting into the market? It's never going to be easy. As I said before, when I was talking about Chiax in Australia, it's not easy to compete. And post-trade, is always one of the biggest hurdles. But yet some of the fledgling or proposed competitors are looking to develop their own clearing houses. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got SIBO moving, partnering with one entity to potentially look at taking bids into Brazil as well. There are a number of groups now looking at this. And given the size and dynamism of the market, it is a market that is right now for competition. And EBM, the regulator, as I said, is actively looking to introduce competition.